All right. The conflict between Islamic civilization and Christian civilization. Now, right up until World War II, Winston Churchill used the phrase Christian civilization. And if my memory is correct with Roosevelt, Franklin D. Roosevelt, he also used the word Christian civilization. It was completely culturally, politically acceptable because it was a historic reality that Christianity, which had dominated the populaces of Europe and then North America and then South America through the spread of Catholicism there, that Christianity was the foundation for culture, for norms, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You shall not steal, honor your father and mother. You shall not bear false witness in court. Six days shall you labor, the seventh day rest. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder, okay? This was the foundation. Now, some people say, well, you could have that in, in any culture. Well, you can't have it in a, in a Muslim culture. Because in a Muslim culture, by law, you're allowed to take slaves, you're allowed to have multiple wives, you're allowed to lie to the infidels. In a, in, a, in a Marxist culture, you're free to murder the capitalists, you're free to steal their property. Okay, so don't, don't tell me that those rules would be applicable anywhere, because it's simply not true. It's simply not true. Muslim law and Muslim culture allowed the decapitation of Christian priests and bishops who refused to stop preaching that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and God the Son and the only Savior of the world. So don't tell me that Christian civilization could have happened anywhere. The facts betray such a ludicrous assertion. Look at the Pacific Rim. Look at Africa. Look at the horrific human rights violations that continue to this day in India. Sati, the burning of widows, live widows, tying them against their will on top of funeral pyres and burning them to death with their husband's body as it's being cremated. It still happens to this day. Child prostitution was legal in India until the middle of the last century, when a Christian missionary, Amy Carmichael, uncovered this horrific practice. There were temples that were dedicated to child prostitution. It was a religious rite, okay? It was a religious activity involved in Hinduism that had political fruit. And if Christian law was going to prevail, then Christianity was going to undermine Hindu law, Hindu regulations, Hindu practices, that they said were religious in nature and that were part of the legal structure. Are you following me? Religions, many of them, certainly Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Hinduism, they have political implications, okay? Look at the caste system in Hinduism. That was law, the five castes, all right? And the implications about how you dealt with untouchables. There were laws. It is not somebody coming up to you and saying, I'm a Hindu, that's a threat. The threat is, if you are a widow in a Hindu area that is dominated by Hindu law and your husband dies, and then they want to take you and tie you to the top of the funeral pyre and burn you to death because of the legal and philosophical and cultural and political fruit and practices of that religion. When I come back from this break, I'll bring it full circle back to Islam. Yeah. I have been a leader in the pro-life movement for 30 years. And sadly, we have not prevailed in our goal to make it a criminal act to kill an unborn baby. There's reasons why we have failed. I wrote this book, A Humble Plea, to Catholic bishops, 
to evangelical clergy and to lay people explaining where we went wrong and what we have to do to prevail. We've made this available as a PDF online for free. I encourage you to go and download your own copy. Why does a nice guy like me keep getting thrown in jail? I have been arrested almost 50 times and spent over a year of my life locked up in various prison facilities. And I wrote a book, many books. In fact, one of them is called, Why Does a Nice Guy Like Me Keep Getting Thrown in Jail? It's a theological work, answering those who say that the church should not be involved in politics or that we should retreat. I encourage you to get it. In fact, get one and give it to your pastor.